Yes, and welcome. Um, we are developing something for the Commodore Pet. The challenge is to uh, draw a smiley on the screen of a standard pet, a Commodore 8032, which means an 80 column by 25 line and 32k of memory. Just draw a smiley. That's it. Now, we could write a basic program to do that, um, but it would be slow in drawing the entire screen. It'll, it'll take like up to one or two minutes. So I decided to do it in assembly. Luckily, the Commodore uh, PET has a 6502 CPU, which means I can just use the same integrated development environment that I use for the Commodore 64. They have the same CPU, so the same opcodes and the same uh, assembly works. But I have to remember that the PET uh, has a different memory map. It doesn't have a VIC-2 chip. It, it None of the, of the kernel uh, routines are in the same place or even exist. Yeah. So I'll take you through the steps of what I've done. First of all, I've designed a screen. So I've gone to my car pad uh, program yay hey and I've set up my um, uh, my car pad th this tool is used to design tile sets and uh, that kind of thing uh, for games so I can design a character set I can make tiles of those and I can make a map based on <gasps> on those tiles it's a very powerful program but many things I don't need, so the pet doesn't have multicolor mode, so I disabled that. Um, I've disabled the tile system, so you don't see any tiles now. All I have here is a character set and uh, a map. Now the character set, I don't have the com uh, the uh, the pet character set, which I don't need really because I just created a dummy character here you can see this character set has only one character in it and with that I've created a smiley I've made sure that I have 80 columns and 25 rows so that I have the entire screen here so I know what I'm doing this is the the entire thing yep there we go it looks a bit stretched here but that's just because of the uh, you know the the ratio here on the pet itself it's much more squashed. Um, basically, I've filled all of the screen with empty spaces, and uh, I've used the the only defined character to draw a smiley. Now, my first um, solution was to just copy this whole uh, area to the screen, which works fine, but then. Uh, the one of the requirements was that this has to be a basic listing that someone is going to have to type in so if i do that that person is going to have to type in the code for every single one of these characters which is 2000 which is a long long list and uh, it's boring and tedious so i i thought why don't i just clear the screen and there's only two characters and draw the uh, the smiley using the coordinates as you can see here uh, oh, uh, right here in this area it says uh, what coordinate I'm pointing at so uh, coordinate I X is 25 which means like the column number and coordinate Y is the uh, is the line number now there's something tricky here because I know the coordinates and I'm going to use that in my program, but I have to convert this to a memory location, which means I'm going to have to multiply. I know that one line is 80 characters long, so when uh, the Y coordinate is 2, I'm going to have to add 2 times 80 columns to get to this line. And then I have to add another 25 to get to this position in memory. Remember that in memory, there is no lines or rows. It's just one long row of 
characters uh, and I have to calculate to get there. Now on an 8-bit system doing 16-bit mathematics is uh, tricky. So I borrowed some code. The thing is that if I borrow code I make sure I know how it works. If I don't know how it works I'm not using it. So I've made this uh, and I've exported it use as a text file uh, to an assembly listing. Now I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna uh, call this uh, test.asm and save it. Now I'm gonna go out of the carpad tool and into my development environment. Um, and I'm going to open that file, test ASM, there it is, and it gives me this. Oh, there's a lot of crap in here that I don't need. Really, um, I mean, crap, I, I call it crap, but you know, normally when you're designing a game, then m much of this stuff is, is interesting to have. But this has the character set. I don't need the character set. Uh, this has the character attribute data, which I don't need either. I need this. This is the map. This is the map data. See all these ones? These ones refer to a character number one, which was an empty space. And in between, you'll see a couple of zeros. The zeros refer to the character that I designed. So this is the information that I need. Everything that is above here, I can just throw away. I've done that. Now what I have to do is I have to... Um, I translate these to spaces and these to uh, a character that I like. I'm gonna have to, you know, choose a character. Now, as you can see, if I if I continue down this road, I will have all this data to input. So I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do, though. I won't save the changes. What I am going to do, though, is go back to Carpad, if I can find it. Oh, there it is. And I'm just going to write down all the coordinates here that uh, that have a character in them. Right, and I've I've I've, I've done that uh, I've done that already. So if we look at this table here. This table defines the smiley. It defines every character that is not a space. And I've done that in such a way that the first character, uh, the first number here is the X coordinate and the second is the Y coordinate. Ta da! Now, now I'm going to have to find a way to, to put that on the screen, which is this. This is all an assembly. I'm going to go into the uh, to the rest, of course, this assembly code needs a little basic to, to get started. Well, that's that's this bit right up here. This is my main program. On the pet, you have to select a character set, which I've done. Then I clear the screen. Um, the screen is 2,000 characters long, so I have an X index here. I have the accumulator, which I load with a space, which is um, a Petsky character 20. This is all hexadecimal, of course. Uh, it's 32 in the decimal. Uh, what I do here, I use a little trick. Uh, the memory, uh, the screen memory starts from this location. And I loop through uh, 255 values of X storing the uh, the empty character in this location plus x. So in the first loop x is 0 so it stores it in this location. On the second loop x is 1 so it goes to 8001, 8002, 8003 until it gets to 8000 uh, ff. That's as far as x will go. x is not larger than 8 bits so that's where it ends. To make sure that I get all the rest of the screen as well, I just do this. Uh, you know, this happens simultaneously. Or, you know, in the same loop, I do not only uh, go from 
uh, 8000 to 8000 FF, but also 8100 to 81 FF, and all of these actually. So this means that I can fill my screen with spaces, and in assembly this doesn't take. Uh, I mean, it, it this happens in the blink of an eye. Right. Um, now I'm going to have to read the table, uh, which I I do here. I I index the table. The table uh, that I refer to is like the the smiley table. This this to me is a is a table. It's just an address in memory, with a number of bytes. At that location. So, what I do is I I index a table. I start with index one. I make sure that I save uh, the uh, the index because I'm gonna have to work with some registers here and X is gonna get uh, destroyed so I have to save it I stay I save it on the stack I transfer X to the accumulator and the, the accumulator goes to the stack I use two zero page addresses to um, to store the uh, the screen address which is a thousand I'm gonna have to use this as a base to calculate my uh, my address location. Now, I have a routine which does multiplication of two 8-bit characters. The outcome of multiplying two 8-bit characters can be a 16-bit uh, uh, a 16-bit value. I say 8-bit characters, but I mean 8-bit value. Um, so this multiplication subroutine requires a parameter. One being 80 is, you know, one of the operands of the of the multiplication uh, being the line width. Because I, if, you know, to calculate the memory location of a character that ends up in line two means that I have to add two times 80 to get at the right line. Now. The table is organized in uh, pairs of coordinates, so there's an X and a Y. My index was zero, so, but I want the Y address because we're going to calculate the line number first. So I increase X with one to make sure that I'm on the Y coordinate in the table. And I load from the smiley table, adding the index. I load the value that's there, which is the the y coordinate, and I store that in in the num one memory location. So I have num two is eighty, and num one is uh, the uh, the line number. And then I just call multiply. Now you're gonna have to trust me that this multiplication thing works, right? So at the end of this routine, the accumulator will have the low part of the eight bit uh, multiplication. And the uh, Y register has the high part, making it in total a 16-bit result. Now remember, uh, these locations where I stored the, uh, the address, I have to now add the result of the multiplication to that. So I start with a low end, um, Knowing that the accumulator contains the low result of the multiplication, I add that to the low part of the address. Naturally, after adding, I have to check whether or not the result of that addition didn't result in an overflow. You know, the addition itself could have resulted in a value that is larger than what can be contained in 8 bits. So... I check for the carry flag here. Is after the addition, if the carry flag was set, I'm pretty sure that the well, I'm not pretty sure. I'm actually sure that the result was larger than eight bits. So, if that is the case, I increase the high part by one. You still with me? Oh man. Um, next, after the multiplication, the Y register contained the high part of the uh, multiplication. So I transfer Y to A. Again, I clear the carry because I'm going to add with carry. I don't want the carry to mess things up. And I add the value to the high part of the result. Remember going back to this 
address. This is where the where the uh, where the final address is going to be. So I I add that, then I pull my original index from the stack. This means that at this point I've done the the line calculations. I'm now on to the X part because I only know how many lines I have to drop, but the character is going to be somewhere on that line. So I'm now going to have to add the X uh, coordinate. So I pull the original index off the stack. I'd stored it, you know, because this was going to, I knew this was going to mess it up. I transfer it to the X register and I load from that location the X coordinate. Now remember that I increased the X here to get to the Y coordinate. Uh, I'd saved the original right here. So that addition, this addition hadn't been done yet. So I, I end up with the original index. I load the X coordinate. I clear the carry. Um, and I now add the x coordinate to the low part of the address where I'm uh, heading. That's easy, but again I have to check whether or not that resulted in an overflow. I do that. If it does, I increase the high part with one again. Um, and then we're done. We store the final value. Uh, so at this point, the address that I'm aiming at to fill has been set up, right? Whew. Now, next, there's another check that we have to do. Um, if you, um, if, if we go back in the code to this portion where I draw the screen. Actually, this one, this last value, is going to add to 87FF as well. If you do the math and you start from this value and add 2000 characters, you will the last character will be this one, 87DO. So every character after 87DO does not go on the screen. Now I can risk writing values there, but I don't know the pet. So I maybe there's like important system data there that I'm overriding. So I have to make sure that as soon as the value that I'm addressing is above that, we stop. So that's what I do. Yeah, I'm scrolling down again. That's what I do here. I load the high part and I check if it's 87 or lower. If it's below 87, fine, we just continue, we jump here. If it's not, we may still be uh, in, in a legal area uh, because we have to check the low part for D0. If D0, you know, if, if we're still below D0, we can just continue uh, with our work. If it's not, if it's equal to D0 or higher, then we have to not draw there. So we jump to no draw which is this part. So this code actually draws the character on the screen. Now I've chosen character number 51 here. It can be anything, but this is a little ball shape, so I thought that would be nice. What I want to do is, I'm scrolling back up, I want to read this address and these memory locations are zero page locations. Um, they are used in the addressing mode that the CPU is going to use now to actually draw something. So I'm scrolling back down. Um, in order to draw something, I have to look at the address that I've calculated and draw something there. Now this address is stored like in a in a vector. We call that a vector. ED scrolling back up you can see ed is a memory location if i i want to read the address that is stored at 
these locations, ED and EE, they follow each other. Um, so I want to look at the address ED, find out which uh, address number is stored there. That is what the the uh, the the indirect, uh, you know, what these brackets mean. Add add a value to that. Um, this is where it gets sort of vague because uh, I have to use this addressing mode because the addressing mode without this doesn't exist for this operation. So I have to use indirect indexed. But I don't want to index. You know, I want to index zero. So I load Y with zero and I add zero. But, you know, it's not that I want this, but this, there's just no other way. So it's a little trick that I have to apply. So this means look at the address stored in ED and EE. That is the result of all of our calculations before this. Add nothing to that, uh, but store this character at that location. And that location is, is the screen, right? We're drawing directly on the screen. After that, we increase our index, not once but twice, because every element in our table is an X and a Y, so we have to move on two positions. If we've done that 146 times, that means we've drawn our character. We've drawn our smiley. If not, we jump back to this uh, to this loop, which means get the next index location and go through the whole thing again for the next uh, for the next character. See, this is assembly programming. <laughs> Um, when we're done, when we've had all the, the characters, we just jump back to uh, this star means, or the asterisk means uh, the, uh, the instruction pointer. So basically, I just jump back to myself. This line is an infinite loop. It doesn't stop. Now, this is the multiplication code. I'm not going into that because it would totally confuse you right now. Uh, and that's our smiley. And that's the entire code. Now, ta-da! Nice, isn't it? So I've saved it saved it I'm going to compile it I've done that you can see down here that it's writing a file uh, stig.prg the PRG file is what we want I've also told uh, uh, the kick assembler which is the assembler that I'm using to generate a vice symbol file so that our emulator vice can read these low uh, these labels and there's a symbol file you know just a regular text file that I can read to see uh, all these labels that I have here, loop and start and, and num2, they all are uh, memory addresses and they are stored in those files. Now, I have a runnable program. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I now go to uh, Vice. I'll, I'll um, no, just a minute. Let me reset the thing. And I got stuff on <laughs> stuff in okay. Ta da! Welcome to Vice, right? Now, um, I um, Vice will allow me to smart attach uh, a PRG file directly without having to make uh, like a disk out of it. So I won't go through those steps. I can make a, a disk image file, but I but I don't want to right now. So I, I'll. I'll attach this PRG file. This is the one that we just started. I'll attach it. And bang. There is our smiley. Is that not nice? Now, the uh, Vice emulator has a machine code monitor. So if I press uh, Alt-M, I end up in the monitor. The basic uh, program that uh, I've included uh, sits at this address. 400 you can see all these codes this is the these are the the tokens that make up the the basic program um, I've told the uh, the assembler to start the code at this address 0700 so I will I can go to the monitor I can say disassemble the code from that address and as you can see I'll just pull up some more code. As you can see, it's very nicely 
assembled the code. See this? Remember this? This code and ED, and you can see EE and all the stuff that we talked about. It's all there, right? Um, I can tell um, the monitor to load the vice labels. I do that, and I disassemble the code again. You will now see that some of the, you know, some of the addresses have labels. This is a start label. This is now the smiley table. This is like the num two and the multiply and the smiley again. So this makes my code a little bit more readable. Uh, but that's that's it basically. Uh, to, uh, to, you know, to, these are the steps to to go through to get a smiley on the screen. Um, now I'll, I'll exit out of the monitor here. I'll um, reset the uh, the pet emulator and just uh, push that to the side. What I can do is I can create a D64 disk image uh, with the last PRG file. When I do that, um, the um, the software will start uh, disk. Sorry, uh, this program. It's created, and if you if you're familiar with the uh, with the Commodore 64, then you'll know this screen. Uh, this will allow me to create a disk image. So I'm gonna save this one. I'm gonna call it Stig2 save it so i now have a disk image i'm going to close this program pull up my pet emulator again and i'm going to attach the disk to the emulator this is the same as putting the disk in your disk drive so i'm going to select stig2 as you can see there's a little image there i attach it now it says attach stig2 d64 to device number eight so I can go load the directory of device number eight. It's loading. I list. I see. Hey, that's Stig. I load Stig from device number eight. I list it. Hey, there's my little basic program that I made. And all it does is call a uh, call a memory address. Now, 1792. I'll pull up the calculator here. Oh, you can still see. This is just the, the, the Windows programmer calculator. Um, the hex value 700, which is still here, which is the location of my main program, is decimal 1792. And as you can see, I call address 1792 there. Now all I have to do is run this. Oh, I have to put the focus on here. Run this. Boop. And that's it. Well... <coughs> Excuse me. That's uh, what I wanted to show you guys. It's been long. It's been intense. Uh, but I hope you like it. Especially some of those uh, techies out there. I know you're going you're gonna to eat this stuff up. So if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I love doing this stuff. So, uh, And I love learning. Especially the multiplication. I'm going to do another video maybe about uh, how to multiply those values. It's, uh, it's fun stuff. Okay. Well, see you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.